Hey, how's it going? And welcome to Whiskey Whims with me, Stuart. Today we're looking at everybody's favourite distillery that begins with an L. No, it's not Loch Lomond, it's, uh, it's Le Cech. So we've got a 12 year old um, Le Cech. That's how I'm pronouncing it, if anybody wants to disagree. Comes in a nice box uh, with a window. And it's by Gordon and McPhail. It was £60, I believe, when it released. Uh, I got this as a Christmas present from Stevie. I'm a, a good bit through it. It's 45% ABV, um, a refill Sherry Hogshead, uh, and a Hermitage cask for three years. Um, and I believe Hermitage is red wine. <laughs> um, I don't think there's anything else to say about it. Non chill filtered, no added colouring. Uh, I think £60 alright for the the price of it, considering the new Le Cech out from uh, Distel, the official bottling, uh, the 9 year old is about £95, <laughs> which is absolutely ludicrous. So yeah, £60 for a 12 year old Le Cech with a, a different kind of finish, a different maturation to it, um, the price seems to be okay so far. So uh, I, I do a thing for my Patreons uh, where I open a bottle or a bottle that I've just recently opened and I review it um, and it's called like First Look, uh, First Look Le Check or First Look whatever and it's exclusively for Patreons and I break down the bottle um, and what I think of it as first impressions. So I'll snip that and we'll add that in uh, to this review. Uh, if you want to skip that, if you don't want to watch it, if you just want to watch the full review and um, then I'll put timestamps on so you can just skip to that. But if you want to stay with us, we'll check out the uh, initial thoughts. Yeah, so I feel like there's wine there. I feel like quite a dominating factor here is, and I'm not the biggest fan of drinking wine. I like wine finished whiskies, but as for drinking wine and smelling wine, I'm not really a fan of it. And this is almost too overpowering with the wine. Well, not too overpowering, but the wine's really evident. There's there's smoke for sure and peat for sure that are trying to mask the wine, but the wine just seems to be at the forefront of the first pour, the initial pour. And I think Hermitage is a Hermitage wine casks. I could be wrong, I could be really wrong, but I'm sure Hermitage is wine. Even if it's not wine, it might be the sherry that's been overpowering. I'll just cover my, my backside. Like I said, it's, it, it's got that wine element, it's got a kind of vinegary, red fruity, almost, yeah, I'm trying to explain wine, it's wine. <laughs> we'll go for the palate. Yeah, <laughs> that's smoky. Smoking. <laughs> Even though that's only forty-five percent ABV, that drinks like a heavy hitter. That feels like a heavy hitter. So yeah, you are getting a real oily mouth feel. You're getting it's like you've just eaten the bacon rashers crisps or something like that. It is really savoury, really bacon. Um, yeah, like instead of unsmoked bacon, it's smoked bacon, it's smoked salty gammon or something, smoked salty bacon. It's really smoky, really savoury, uh, and like I said, quite a hard hitting whiskey to start with. Initial sweetness at the, the, the first, or maybe the second, the, the reintroduction of the whiskey to the, the, the palate. There is a, a sweetness now, a kind of fruity element red berries, uh, I want to say like maple syrup, like a syrup, because of the, the oily mouthfeel, I want to say something syrupy, something sticky. But yeah, the peat's there again, the smoke's there again, the second um, second taste isn't as hard hitting as the first, the first kind of throws you off your feet, but the second taste is a lot more uh, pleasant, a lot more laid by us. Um, yeah, it's nice, it's a, it's a tasty whiskey, the nose, Still very much the same, still very much, I reckon, more oxygen, leaving the lid off for a while, uh, getting further down the bottle will probably develop that wine smell, make it fruitier, make it less vinegary, but at the moment it's a little off-putting, however the palate is uh, enjoyable, as you can tell with the smell on my face, the palate's got a lot to answer for. The, the finish is long, smoky as you'd expect, peaty, a little brine, uh, a little kind of coastal, the savoury elements slightly there, but nothing uh, as 
harsh as the first initial taste, but there is a little bit of savoury. It's, it's like you've, yeah, I'm just licking my lips. It is, it's like you've kind of been in the sea, you've been swimming in the sea, you come out of the sea, uh, and you, you, you start to dry in the hot sun, even though it's, we're not in Scotland, right? <laughs> we're in Tenerife or somewhere, or Lanzarote, anywhere, Greece. You're, you've been in the sea, you've came out to the hot sun, and your lips have started to dry, and you've just licked them, and you've still got that salt layer on your lips. It's like that. It's salty, uh, that salt layer still there, that sea salt. That's how I'd describe it. It just took me back. It, it, it tra transported me to being on holiday after coming to the sea. So yeah, that was the, uh, <laughs> the initial thought. Um, like I said, I've only snipping a, a, a bit bit from it. Uh, I'm not taking the full review, the full first look review, because uh, that is exclusively paid for Patreon. So we'll get down to the uh, review and see how it compares. Um, so the nose, yeah, it's a little sulfuric on the nose with uh, a smoky sweetness. Um, there's a, a big strike, a big hit of um, of a kind of dirty peat um, that kind of strikes a chord with my uh, dirty side. <laughs> Um, my love for kind of a little bit funky, a little bit dirty, um, and this does, it does pander to that, it does um, accommodate that. There's kind of menthol freshness, but it's overpowered by a, a WD-40 um, element. Yeah, definitely something like WD-40. I, I am in the garage, I just hope it's not from the, the bike the um, or anything else. But yeah, there is something like WD-40. It's kind of reminiscent of like a, of the Springbank region with that, that kind of funky dirtiness and this kind of WD-40 element. I, I tend to get that a lot in Springbanks. But yeah, it's lovely on the nose. Yeah, it's, it's, it's reminded me of like a, a long row red. Uh, it's similar to a long row red. It's, it's bursting with like peaty red fruits, um, just oily and juicy. And it is, it's so nice on the nose. Maybe like a little bit of candy force or something there now as well. It is quite sweet but still quite dirty. Yeah, fantastic nose. Uh, really, I'm I'm enjoying the nose, uh, and it is surprising uh, that that I'm getting these uh, long row aspects because the long row reds are a well sought after whiskey, and this this was probably quite uh, easy to pick up. I'm just trying to see how many um, bottles. Four thousand four hundred and forty bottles, but I think it's still available now. Uh, I just realised. I've got a scab here uh, that I might tell you about. I, I hit my head off a, a shelf if you're wondering what, what what's going on there. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I'm going to get for the nose. Uh, we'll go down to the palate and see how the palate is. Oily, viscous, with lots of smoke. Um, it's it's creamy, it's oily. You're repeating yourself, you know that? You're repeating. There's dark fruits with like a, a kind of drizzle of like caramel sauce. Um, almost like some sort of like forest gato or something, but drizzled with caramel sauce. Quite a sweet uh, palate. It is also salty though, and there's a kind of a tart sharpness to it. There's um, kind of coal fired or coal smoked um, bacon, cinnamon buns with uh, orange zest, uh, kind of grated on top of them or, or integrated into the the cinnamon bun uh, mixture to bake them. Just a little bit of a zest, a little bit of an orange. Uh, kind of fruitiness to it, uh, or yeah, zest <laughs> um, in the cinnamon buns. More sweetness coming through in the palate, in the form of something like uh, those cherry Haribos you get. The um, I think it's from the Super Mix or the Star Mix. Those gummy cherry Haribos that a lot of people love, and I quite love, uh, quite like them, quite enjoy them. But yeah, you're getting them uh, almost like a, a synthetic cherry flavour, a manufactured cherry flavour, but quite chewy, um, gummy, that's that's the best way I can describe it. The sulphur's still there, uh, just present enough, not too, not too eggy or anything like that in the palate, not too uh, dominant, but just there to kind of, you give you this lovely sweetness, this a little bit of savoury, um, and then just to kind of pull you back a little, just to say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm still here, uh, I'm still lurking in the background. <laughs> that sounds creepy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a great a great nose and great palate so far. We'll get down to the finish. The finish is long for sure. Um, it's dirty smoke. There's a lot of coastal ele elements there. There's some licorice. Uh, and there's something familiar with uh, when I was a child. Uh, I think before 2006, I think 2006 when the smoking ban came in, 
but that heavy, dense uh, pub uh, atmosphere and environment where you've got a kind of a fire pit going, uh, that kind of smoky element there. It's a little bit musty in the pub. Uh, there's people smoking cigarettes. There's somebody who's just got a fish uh, and chips takeout from the chip shop next door. They've brought that into the pub and there's alcohol in the air. It's all that kind of grimy, um, almost dirty uh, feel to it uh, in the finish. Uh, and it's really, uh, it's quite fantastic. It's quite a, a trip, <laughs> quite an experience. Um, so I'm going to take another sip. I don't think I'm going to add water to it. Reason being, it's 45% and I honestly don't think this needs water. I think it's perfect the way it is. Uh, it's drinkable, it's not overpowering. It might confuse you with the, the peat and the dirtiness that it might be a little bit high ABV, but there's no uh, there's no spiciness, there's no burn from the alcohol. But I'm going to take another sip and then we'll, uh, we'll see if it's a whiskey win or a whiskey bin. Mm. <laughs> it is good stuff. So we'll set that there for now and hopefully it won't fall. So, if you're new here, I rate my whiskey on three factors. Would I buy it again? Do I think it's worth it? And would I recommend it? If we get two out of three, uh, it's a, a whiskey win. Uh, and if we only get one out of three or less, then it's a, a whiskey bin. So, would I buy this again? Yeah, I like, I like it enough to buy it again. Uh, I've enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, I'm probably just under halfway through. I've, I've had a lot of it. Uh, the first being was Christmas Day. I opened it on Christmas Day. I uh, didn't really have a great experience on Christmas Day because I was a little under the weather with it. Uh, not because of the whiskey, but just under the weather in general. Um, but ever since then, in the first look, uh, I knew in the first look that it was going to be something special. And it, it has been something special. It's been something dirty, something fruity, something funky, something just a little bit unique uh, compared to what we normally get. Uh, so yeah, I would probably buy it again. Do I think it's worth it? Uh, £60... 12 year old, I don't know if I said £40 earlier, but uh, I might have, no, I think I said £60. Uh, £60, 12 year old, it's a good ABV, uh, non chill filler, no added colouring, good age, uh, a, a long maturation, three years, or a long finish, three years in the Hermitage cask, uh, and I believe the nine years in the refill sherry. So, it's a decent maturation, it's a kind of unique maturation, so, yeah, I, I think it's worth the, the £60, and I would buy that again at that price. Max would I pay? I think max I would pay probably is £60. Uh, maybe 70 at a push. I don't think it's anything uh, awarding over a £100 price mark or even like £90 price mark. I think this is just perfectly priced. Uh, and would I recommend it? Yeah, you need to try it. <laughs> um, 4,400 bottles, like I say, I think it's still available in some shops. Uh, but I would recommend this if you, if you like if you like a typical Springbank uh, characters where it's a bit dirty, a bit funky. Um, then this will sit well with you. The Lecheck obviously being the, the peated version or the peated part of Tobermory Distillery. Uh, so yeah, it's got that peated element, it's got that coastal element and it's got a real dirty funkiness to it that just reminds me of Long Row Reds. Um, so I'm quite glad that Stevie picked this up and bought it for my Christmas because it's a belter of a find. Um, and I think that's all I've got to say. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. If you want to join my Patreon, it's in the link below. Uh, all my socials are down there as well. And if uh, you liked the video, please do like it and subscribe. Uh, so thanks for watching. I've been Stuart, this has been Whiskey Wims. I'll see you later.